My name is Martha Ludwig and I'm one of the lecturers in the units that make up the genetics major at the University of Western Australia. This video will give you some introductory information about genetics as a discipline and then we'll follow that by a brief description of the units that make up the genetics major here at UWA. And we'll finish up the video talking about future study options after the genetics major and then career opportunities that an undergraduate major in genetics offers. Now one of the questions that I get often from students is what is genetics? And very simply put, genetics is the study of inheritance. So in other words, how traits or characteristics are passed on from generation to generation. And this very simple definition is really the foundation for all of the sub-disciplines of genetics that you'll encounter, whether we're talking about molecular genetics, conservation genetics, quantitative genetics, or evolutionary genetics. They all rest on this simple definition of the study of inheritance being genetics. Something else to remember about genetics is that it's transdisciplinary. So that means that essentially all disciplines of biological science, whether we're talking about zoology, botany, biochemistry, microbiology, pathology, all of these disciplines cover some aspect of genetics. Now some of you might be aware of essentially a revitalization in genetics that's happening worldwide, and that's come about because of the sequencing of the entire genomes of as many plants, animals, and microbes as possible. The information gained from this work has already affected our lives and will continue to affect our lives because it will allow us to develop strategies to cure disease, to grow animals and plants that can deal with our changing climates, and thereby giving us food and fuel supplies. And in addition, this information will allow us to ensure our worldwide biodiversity. Now the units that you'll take in the genetics major at UWA will introduce you to all aspects of modern genetics. So you'll gain experience in using the techniques of modern geneticists, and you'll also gain the knowledge in this very rapidly moving field of biological sciences. Now during the course, you can expect to spend somewhere between 16 and 20 hours a week in class. Now class consists of lectures, practicals, as well as tutorials. To get as much out of the course as possible, you'll probably also want to spend an equal number of hours of your own time studying the material that's actually presented in class. The genetics major can be studied as a degree-specific major in the Bachelor of Science or in the Bachelor of Philosophy Honors or as a second major in any of the undergraduate degrees. The genetics major is designed to be completed in three years. In the first year, that is at level one of the major, you'll undertake two core units. For one of these core units, you actually have a choice. You have a choice between BIOL 1130, Core Concepts in Biology, or ANHB 1101, Human Biology 1, Becoming Human. In Core Concepts in Biology, you'll learn about the different kingdoms of life, the animals, plants, and microbes that make up these different kingdoms, and you'll learn about the characteristics that all of these organisms share, and you'll also learn about the characteristics that distinguish a microbe from a plant or an animal. The second core unit for level one in the genetics major is SCIE 1106, Molecular Biology of the Cell. This unit concentrates on the structure of cells, both prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cells, and it focuses on the DNA and the proteins that are working in the cell. So you'll learn about the function of DNA, such as replication and transcription, and then the proteins encoded by that DNA and what those proteins do, what functions they have in cells. And again, this is for both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. In addition, you'll learn about the recombinant DNA technology and how this technology is used in medical science, in industry, as well as in basic science. Now students who elect to take genetics as their degree-specific major will also need to complete two complementary units. One of these units is STAT 1400, Statistics for Science, and the other complementary unit is a chemistry unit. But for the chemistry unit, you actually have a choice of chemistry, but the choice is dependent on the chemistry that you've had in school. You may take Chem 1001, Chemistry, Properties, and Energetics, or Chem 1003, Introductory Chemistry. Again, the choice of those two units is dependent on your background in chemistry. At level two of the genetics major, there are two core units. The first of these is Genetics 2250, and this is called the Principles of Inheritance. 
This unit will give you the foundation of understanding how genes, traits, and characteristics are inherited. And with that strong foundation in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, then you can move on to the next core unit at level two, and that's gene 2230, molecular genetics one. In molecular genetics one, the focus is on DNA, how it is the hereditary material, how mutations in the DNA lead to genetic diversity, and how sometimes those mutations are repaired. At level three, there are four core units making up the genetics major. The first of these is gene 3340, molecular genetics two. As the name implies, it builds on the information that you learned in molecular genetics one at level two. So there's an added detail about DNA as a hereditary material, how its mutation leads to diversity amongst individuals as well as populations. In addition, in this unit, you'll learn about genetic markers, how they're identified, and how they're used to solve genetic problems. And you'll also learn about how model organisms are used in genetic analyses. So the second core unit in the genetics major is gene 3370 genomics. Now this unit is more of a bigger picture molecular genetics unit in the sense that instead of looking at an individual gene or genes, you're looking at a whole genome and understanding how that whole genome functions. So you'll be introduced to the technology of genomics, and then we'll move on and talk about the technology of transcriptomics. And that's where we're looking at all the genes that are expressed by a cell or a tissue or by an entire organism. And then we can take it another step further, and you'll look at the proteome, and that reflects all of the proteins that are expressed in a cell or in a tissue or in an individual. So at the end of this unit, you'll have a good idea of what's happening with the genome, with the transcriptome, and with the proteome. And you'll also have a good idea of how this information is being used in biomedical science and agricultural science, as well as in bigger picture biology, which is now called systems biology. In the third year of the genetics major, you'll also take gene 3360, evolutionary genetics. And in this unit, you'll look at the genetic basis and the mechanisms that are involved in evolutionary change in populations. And these populations will be both natural populations as well as managed populations. And you'll learn about the factors that maintain genetic diversity in populations, and also about the factors that allow genetic diversity between populations. And in some cases, the diversity leads to the speciation event or the evolution of a new species. For the fourth core unit in the genetics major at level three, you have a choice between two units. You may choose to do gene 3350, evolution and development, or medical genetics. In evolution and development, the focus is on the molecular genetics and the evolution of genes that are involved in developmental pathways. And you'll look at genes and gene families that are common to very diverse organisms as far as their development goes. And you'll also look at genes and gene families that are species specific. So for medical genetics, you'll look at the cause of human disease, the types of therapies that are available to deal with these diseases, and also the management of the disease, both in a clinical sense and also how diseases are managed within families where these diseases are present. And you'll look at the clinical utility of these different tests that are available for diagnosing human disease. Now, when you've finished the genetics major, what's next? Well, future study options include honors degree in genetics or a master's by coursework in genetics. Students with a genetics major who have obtained an average of 65% or more in their level three genetics units are eligible to undertake an honors in genetics or master's by coursework in genetics. In the honors year, a student works on a project that is supervised by an academic staff member working in the field of genetics. And it's a project that you're interested in working on. Coursework is also involved in the honors in genetics, and you'll be learning about advanced levels of genetic work, genetic analyses, genetic research. The honors year culminates in a thesis, and that thesis is then examined by people at UWA in the discipline of genetics. A master's by coursework in genetics will also be available, and this will entail two further years of study. 
Now this course contains a significant research component as well as coursework, again, dealing with advanced level of genetic analysis and genetic research. In both the honors and master's by coursework genetics degrees, students gain a sense of what it's like to do research, to get their hands dirty on a genetics problem. But in addition to this, students also learn problem solving skills as well as develop their written and oral communication skills. And all of these characteristics are highly sought after by employers. Students who complete either an honors degree or a master's by coursework degree in genetics are eligible to undertake a PhD. The PhD consists of independent supervised research. So again, you're working under the supervision of an academic who works in the field of genetics and the PhD culminates in a thesis. The thesis has to describe a substantial piece of work that is original research. And the thesis is then examined by examiners external to UWA. They're sent out to experts in the field. Many of our gr genetics graduates find careers in laboratory and field-based research. Other opportunities, of course, include teaching as well as positions in state and federal government agencies that deal with making policies that we follow through biotechnology and transgenic manipulation. And it's really important that we have graduates with solid foundations in genetics to advise on these policies because these are the policies that we work under in the fields of genetic research. More specifically, your degree can lead to opportunities in pharmaceutical science, in agribusiness, in biomedical and bioscience research, medical laboratory technology, plant and animal breeding, as well as diagnostics, both medical and veterinary diagnostics, forensic, genetic counseling, and patent law. We hope you found this video informative and we hope to see you at UWA soon.